good morning to all. I am Dr. Kangsha Tandon, and uh, I'll be talking about association between ankle brachial index and severity of coronary artery disease. So the clinical research question of my study is that can ankle brachial index be used in routine clinical practice to predict the severity of coronary artery disease? The aims and objectives of my study were to investigate ABPI as a surrogate marker and predictor for severity of coronary artery disease and to determine the relation between ABPI and angiographic findings along with major cardiovascular risk factors in patients with suspected or at risk of developing CAD. So this study investigated the association of ankle brachial pressure index with various atherosclerotic risk factors and angiographic findings in suspected CAD patients without peripheral arterial disease. So all patients with peripheral arterial disease were excluded from my study. And uh, blood pressure ratios between the four limbs can be simultaneously obtained and calculated with ABI measurement. So the rationale of my study was that ABI is a measure of the severity of atherosclerosis in the legs and an abnormal ABI value that is of less than or equal to 0 0.9 is sensitive and specific for detecting PAD. But it is also an independent indicator of the risk of subsequent atherothrombotic events elsewhere in the vascular system, which is the leading cause of morbidity and mortality in the world. ABI may be used as a risk marker both in general population free of clinical cardiovascular diseases and in patients with established or suspected CVD. So my research methodology was that it was a hospital-based cross-sectional analytical study which was conducted in the Department of Physiology in KGMU with collaboration, uh, with the in collaboration with the Department of Cardiology and the total study duration was of 12 months. So I recruited the subjects from Lari Cardiology Department OPD, fulfilling my inclusion and exclusion criteria. And informed written consent was filled by each subject. Patients who were included were all the subjects who came to me in the OPD, along with patients who were in the IPD after their angiographic uh, findings were concluded. Subjects at risk for CAD examined were uh, on the basis of risk factors like age, sex, endocrinological disorders including diabetes, tobacco and smoking history was also taken along with their hypertension status. Patients with chronic stable angina, unstable angina, non-ST segment elevated MI and ST segment elevated MI were included in my studies and all the patients who were planned for coronary or CT angio were included. Patients with lower limb gangrene, deformity of the upper or the lower limbs who did not give consent for the procedure, any patients with valvular or congenital diseases or established malignancy and with severe lung, renal or liver comorbidities were excluded from my study. So ABI was measured in supine position using an automated device, which was a portable device. And this device automatically uh, and si simultaneously measured systolic and diastolic blood pressure of both right and left sides using the oscillometric method. Right ABI was calculated by the ratio of the right ankle systolic blood pressure divided by the higher systolic blood pressure of the arms. And also, likewise, left ABI was calculated by the ratio of the left ankle SVP divided by the higher SVP of the arms. So uh, in cases of different values between the right and the left side, the lower value was included in my study. And the value was calculated up to two decimal points. After measuring ABI patients, I categorized them into two groups, that is ABI positive, having an ABPI value of less than or equal to 0 0.9, and ABI negative. Particularly in ABI negative, I further subcategorized them into two, which is between 0 0.9 and 1.2, and more than 1.2. The basic aim was 
to include patients having an intermediate risk of developing vessel disease, having an AVPI value of between 0.9 to 1.2. So angiographic findings uh, were included, like having single vessel, double vessel, and triple, triple vessel disease. And the vessels which were studied were uh, left marginal coronary artery, right coronary artery, left anterior descending artery, diagonal arteries, obtuse marginal, and left circumflex artery. Vessel occlusion was also, uh, as a criteria which was seen in the angiographic finding, seeing no occlusion, less than 50% inclusion, and more than 50% inclusion. And the third thing which was finding, which was included in my study, was vessel calcification, whether the vessels were calcified or not calcified. And then further, these angiographic findings were compared with my ABI values. So with respect to these angiographic findings, I divided them into two categories, which is mild CAD and severe CAD. Patients having no vessel involvement or a single vessel disease were included as mild CAD. And patients with severe CAD were, uh, who were having angiographic findings involving double vessel and triple vessel disease. So based on the formulated objectives of the study in a sample size of 210 subjects, as I already said, I divided them into three categories. Thereafter, interpretation using descriptive and inferential statistics, it was done on two categories, that is ABI positive and patients with intermediate risk. Among the population studied, 49 subjects were ABI positive and 161 were ABI negative. And out of those 161, 20 patients, that is 9.5% patients had an ABI value of between 0.9 and 1.2, that is at intermediate risk of developing CAD in future. So uh, patients having low ABI showed that 24.4.8% patients had single vessel disease, 51% patients had double vessel, and only 24.48% patients had triple vessel disease. Taking ABI as a dependent factor and vessel disease, single, double, and triple vessel disease is an independent variable, we took out uh, inferential statistics and we took out these uh, coefficient values in which we can see that in single vessel disease, the coefficient value is 0.84 and as we move on from single vessel to triple vessel disease, the coefficient value increases with a p-value of less than 0.05, which is statistically significant. In con cases with ABI values between 0.9 and 1.2, significant values were seen with patients having triple vessel disease. As I said that I also uh, studied various atherosclerotic risk factors and compared between the two groups. So there was statistical value seen between patients having a history of diabetes, hypertension, family history of CAD and smoking, but no significant, uh, statistically significant findings were seen with BMI more than 25. So the conclusion of my study is statistically significant association was seen with these risk factors except BMI more than 25 and the risk of severity of coronary artery involvement is significantly higher in ABI positive as with increasing involvement of the vessels from single vessel to triple vessel disease in which ABI is less than 0.9, which was statistically significant. So thus supporting the statement that low AVPI can predict the severity of CAD. And I also said that there were patients having borderline risk in which also significant association was seen with the vessel disease involvement. So since this is a hypothesis proving study, so therefore it has a high significance in clinical setting. Thank you.